Hello, my name is Nicholas Santillo, and today we're going to be going through DHIS2's data input unit, specifically the org units. This is the DHIS2 curriculum we've been developing at Logical Outcomes, and it's based on the Academy workshops you can see listed on the left-hand side of your screen. In this video, we're going to be looking at org units. The required readings for this section on org units are Chapter 4 from the User Manual and Chapter 10 from the Implementation Guide. So the idea of the organizational hierarchy and the organizational units, or as we call them, org units, is that at the lowest level, you'll have the most amount of different facilities or different data input. And as you can see in this uh, little graphic, it's kind of like a pyramid. So as you get higher and higher up to the top or the country level or, or the higher levels, uh, there'll be fewer uh, facilities or organizations that are collecting data and they'll be doing more of the reporting. Here's an example of what the organizational hierarchy would look like within the system itself. As you can see, level one is the highest level or the most uh, senior level, which would often be the country. And as you go down, you get state and the uh, local government area and then wards and then finally level five being facilities. Now you can have as many levels as you'd like in DHIS2, uh, although the user manual and uh, the DHIS2 Academy suggests that you try to stick to about five levels just for the ease of use and the system can get overwhelmed and, and slow things down if you have too many. It's also good to note that it's usually good to avoid one-to-one. -one. As you can see, level two and three, there's a state and LGA that are just one-to-one. -one. Uh, a lot of the uh, documentation and we suggest that you try to avoid these one-to-one -one connections that you try to have uh, a multiple smaller uh, units that connect to a larger one this allows when uh, burrowing down into data and, and seeing where it comes from you can actually get a bit more information as opposed to seeing the exact same numbers at a lower level it's also important to note that what we're looking at is a geographical representation. This is really important for org units because this will allow us to then set all the data into our mapping section in GIS, uh, which is within the data output section, data visualization. Uh, that's the main reason uh, why we keep our org units in a geographical uh, setting. Now group sets are another way to organize org units. So as you can see at the bottom, uh, the, the bottom row there, org units and facilities, these are specific org units and those would be existing on different levels of uh, the org units, level one, two, three, or five, four or five. But uh, a lot of these facilities belong to parallel or different hierarchies and often they're non-geographical. And for that case, we'd be using groups and group sets. So as you can see, we have groups and then the groups all uh, attached to a different group set. Now the key to this is that we just want to make sure that our org units don't belong to multiple groups within the same group set because then we have duplication of data. So for best practices, just to remember the naming convention is always very important and correct spelling, as well as making sure that the units are at the right level. Uh, oftentimes you'll have to negotiate the levels uh, to make them a little bit more clear than they might be in reality. And of course, Later on, you can change uh, what levels and the structure of org units in the future or as you go. So just to be aware that you wanna be as clear as possible when, when you start, but you can make changes later. Uh, it's just gonna have an effect on your data if you're already entering data, um, as you won't be able to view data from the previous uh, setting of org units after you've changed them. But that's something uh, that is also mentioned in the readings. So here's just a brief example of what it's going to look like in the system. On the right side, uh, choosing data sets to assign to org units. On the top left, uh, how to name an org unit. And then the bottom left, assigning the organization unit groups to your org unit. These would have to be pre-created. Uh, and they're all created within the organization unit uh, app within uh, DHIS2, and we'll take a look at that a little bit later. The next slide is a uh, quiz, and I can't uh, talk over that, so it's just a little bit uh, to see if you can uh, 
point out which of the options is not an organization unit. And then I'll be back on the next slide. So finally, some best practices on the use of group sets and groups. It's important to note that all groups must be a member of at least one or of one group set, I should say. Otherwise, they're going to be sitting disconnected and then you won't be able to uh, get data on them, even if they have um, or units within them because group sets are the uh, top level. Group sets hold different groups. It's also very important to know that uh, you're going to get duplication of data if you have org units that are members of multiple groups within the same group set. Uh, org units can be members of multiple groups as long as all those groups are in separate group sets. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have that duplication of data. So the final slide will just be me showing you around a little bit within the system to see what to expect when you get there uh, and you're working with organization units and group sets. So here I am within DHIS2. This is the logical outcomes uh, training uh, land that we have set up. I've gone to the apps and I've clicked it on more apps, uh, clicked on more apps, and that's the way that we can see all of the apps that uh, you have access to within your uh, profile. So my profile has access to, I believe, all of them. This is what they'll all look like. And what we're going to be going into right now is the Organization Units app. So if we click on that, we're going to be brought to this screen. Uh, if you have a bigger screen, you might have two uh, columns. But this is going to be where you're going to create all of your org units. You're going to group them, create group sets, and add the groups to the group set. And you'll be able to look at your uh, unit levels as well. So I'm just going to click into um, just the organization uh, unit to be able to see what that looks like and you can see here that we have access to the nonprofit system which is our top level and all these other ones uh, now this is just a uh, development uh, instance that we have so uh, it's not exactly set up uh, specifically uh, with the correct uh, org units but you can see what you're working with and you can open them uh, or close them as you like and add new org units if you want as well and adding those you'll be br brought to the uh, screen that you saw a little bit earlier in the slides and then you can add it here at the bottom so that's it for now uh, I think that should be good for you to get started have some fun uh, go into the, the your own system whichever one you have access to uh, if it's training land or if it's your own uh, DHIS2 instance and just uh, play around, look at the org units and um, see what you can do. So until next time, thanks so much for watching. So that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching and uh, until next time, I'm Nicholas Santillo from Logical Outcomes.